Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and your Reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word the Bible. And this is a baby crying here, you know, in the Philippines. Nothing new under the sun is babies galore. My goodness gracious. I mean, that's just a deal. Now, um, we're studying Okay, this is part two. I mean, I mean, this is not really part two. I mean, this is probably part ten by now. But in this particular, uh, in this particular time, uh, this is really part two of uh, where did Jesus go when he died? Okay, that's 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 really. I could I should I could call it shachat for um olo shachat no corruption or something like that in the future. But I mean, I'll think of a title for part two. And this is very, very important. I'll let you know why after I read the scriptures. Now, uh, let me read from verse 10 of Psalm 16. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Or corruption, says probably the King James, okay? All right, now this is the NASB, one of the most dependable Bibles out there in the market. Let me read this, this, this again. This is quite clear. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. Now, in part one, I said that when Jesus died, and I'm going to get into the actual scriptures, okay, I, I got into this verse, I, I, you know, we looked at the Hebrew, we looked at the Greek, the Greek, you know, Septuagint, a, a 300 BC, that's my baby Anna Devane in the background, uh, we saw that um, translation, the Greek translation of the Jewish scriptures around 300 to 100 uh, uh, BC, and we looked at all that, okay, so we looked at only one verse, this verse. Now, why is this important? Well, first of all, it's important because, you know, without the resurrection, there is no a Christianity. Okay? As someone said very eloquently, okay, the resurrection is the capstone of Christianity, removes it and all else crumbles. It is the singular doctrine that elevated Christianity above all the pagan uh, religions of the world. End quote. Okay? This is absolutely essential to believe. You must believe in the not only the resurrection of Jesus, but the bodily resurrection from the dead ones. Now, what do you mean dead ones? Well, actually, in the English, it's kind of it's kind of hidden underneath the accent. It's of English, okay. And so the thing is that it's really dead ones, okay. He was raised from the dead ones, and that that proves in and of itself. Okay, that Jesus came from a particular place that was not heaven at the time. Now he eventually will be uh, would ascend to heaven. But he said, and we'll look at a verse that's written and recorded, and the scriptures cannot be broken in John chapter twenty, verse seventeen, where he says to Mary, "I have not yet ascended unto the Father, but go until uh, you know." Uh, the brethren, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that, okay? As a matter of fact, there might be two ascensions. And we, if you look at the, at the narrative very clearly, I go and ascend to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. That's probably the first ascension, okay? You understand what I'm saying? And then, uh, and then he ascended in uh, Praxis Apostolone, Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, and, uh, you know, in Luke, uh, chapter 24, and, and so on. Okay, we see the the ascension of ascensions, if you will, okay? But we have to look at the scriptures more carefully as the, as the Christian church, and we won't get into so much trouble, okay? When either we're studying it for our edification or for the edification of uh, others, and also when, when different cults and sects uh, come and uh, visit us and try to sway us to join, okay, uh, a, 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 a religion or a, a cult that is not... Uh, based on the Bible, okay? The Bible. Now, also, if you're new to this channel, I Am Ministries gets its title, okay, from Jesus saying, I am so many times. It does not come from the speaker because of the speaker. That's number one. Number two, 
I like to preach like the apostles are preach with power, boldness. You don't want somebody wishy-washy saying, well, I think it says this in the Bible. Well, I think it means this. And then, uh, well, the English is the standard. So I'll go by that. And I'm not going to go by the original languages that God prepared us basically before the foundation of the world. <laughs> okay, you understand? Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic. Those are the original languages of the Bible. And so when somebody comes to us with an idea that's foreign to the Bible, we have to get back and see what the Bible says, okay? And, you know, the Bible is that, that, that measuring rod or that ruler that actually uh, proves all things. You understand what I'm saying? Well, that's just the deal. Now, let's read this again. This is very clear. For you will not abandon, okay, my soul uh, to Sheol. No. Will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay? And decay there in the Greek, a case of Tuagen, a translation of the Jewish scriptures, uh, done like 300 uh, uh, B.C., commissioned by Alex, uh, by, uh, by, uh, in Alexandria, Egypt, by Philadelphia. Uh, and then that's just a deal. He was like the commissioner of, 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 of the project, like King James will commission the King James uh, project and other uh, people will commission uh, certain Bibles in in the future. Okay, Polemi Philadelphus was was his name who commissioned uh, the the project of the Greek Septuagint, which is the translation of the Jewish scriptures. Okay, so many people were involved in that project, and it was uh, probably done like around the second century uh, B.C. But let's get into the other scriptures. Now there was this one passage that comes into mind. This is the Old Testament. There's other scriptures that come into my, to mind that Jesus didn't go uh, to heaven right away. I, I'm not saying that he never went to heaven. He did. Okay. The, the two ascensions takes care of that. Okay. Yes, two, not one. Again, we have to be very careful with the scriptures and not skip anything. Oh, we love the, the first ascension that's really popular. Oh, we'll deal with that. Oh, we love, uh, you know, like uh, the uh, Peter sermon, uh, I mean, uh, Peter's, uh, you know, uh, preaching at the day of Pentecost, and we don't get into the other sermons, especially the sermon of Stephen and a, uh, in chapter 7 of that same book, the Acts of the Apostles, and, and the sermon of Paul, you know, uh, you know, uh, chapter 17. You understand what I'm saying? That's just the deal. So let's get into uh, Luke, okay, as I wake up my other baby, uh, Sean Donnelly, you know, he's a newborn, he's about like 60 days old or whatever it is, almost 60 days old, anyway. Now, um, let's, let's uh, punch up the, uh, the button here, and let's go to the, <clears throat> poke the bear, I should say, and let's go to the, um, the, the Gospel of Luke, okay, the Gospel of Luke, let's check that out now. Um, and let's go to chapter 20, chapter 23 and verse, uh, uh, 43. Okay. And let me see if I could get there. Okay. This is Luke right here. And let's look at the proof. Okay. The proof the the clear, not, not, not vague teachings, not vague verses, I should say, but clear, cogent teaching verses. That's what we need. We don't need vague texts. Okay. We need, we need the deal. Now let's go to chapter 23 right here. And that's just a deal. I'm recording, hon. And so, uh, verse 43. I'm talking to my wife, uh, Risa Tobias Quinones. Okay, now, um, so that's just a deal. So let's look at it. Um, actually, let, let me see if I'm recording. <laughs> this will be actually a shame if I'm not, okay? Let me see. And I am, thank God. Okay. All right, now, um, so let's go to verse 43. Now, look, at this is the context. Jesus is speaking to a certain person on the cross, okay? And the other person uh, was on a cross, okay? And this is just a deal. It says over here, let's go to verse, or actually 42, and to look, to look at a, a wider a context. And he uh, was saying, Jesus, okay, the, 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 the repentant sinner, the criminal, you understand what I'm saying? Was talking to Jesus. And uh, and he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Now, this is what Jesus said in verse 43. And he, that's a capital H there, Jesus. And he said to him, truly I say to you, 
today. Look at the, where the comma is, okay? It's not that he said, truly I say to you today, what I'm telling you, I'm telling you today. No. The Jehovah's Witnesses, they placed a comma after the word today and make the today actually uh, uh, tell you and me that what he was saying to the repentant Shedda, he was saying on that day. It's ridiculous, okay? The comma goes before the today and not after. So that's what the after, and that's another uh, thing, okay? The, where the comma is is very, very important. And he said uh, to him, Truly I say to you, comma, Today you shall be with me in heaven? No, paradise. Actually, the Greek is paradiso. It's in a dative case. The dative case has to do with interest. When you want to say that something is in, some, you know, that someone or something is in something or whatever the case may be, or, or to or by, or those, those key words, you use the dative case. Okay? Ererchino logos que o logos sin prostonte o que te o sino logos. John 1 1 in Greek. Praise God, he gets the glory, not me. In arche or, or in arche. Well, arche or beginning is in the dative case because you're saying that logos or logos was in the beginning. So you, 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 you know, you put that in the dative case. That's all. In the dative case. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's in the dative case in the Greek Septuagint. And a he like that, or an arche, a poison hot the as tan ran on kaitain gain. In the beginning God created the heaven, it says over there in the earth. Actually in the heavens, the heavens in the in the in the, in the Hebrew. But this is quite clear. Well, look what he said. Did he say that he was gonna go to heaven that day? No. Well, because this was before the resurrection, that's why. Now, now after the Anastasis, which is the Greek word for resurrection, well to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. <laughs> to the part uh, and to be with Christ, which is far better. And he said uh, to him, Truly I say to you, Jesus is speaking, Truly I say to you, Kama, today you shall be with me in paradise. Paradise. Well, now remember we just read that uh, Jesus went to Sheol. And this says, well, he went to paradise. Make up your mind. Okay, I mean, uh, well, but the, the Trinity already made up their mind and made the plan before the, before the foundation of the world. Okay, the Father planned salvation, the Son executed that plan, and the Holy Spirit applied the plan to our hearts. Okay, that's just the deal. Planning, execution, and applying was... The royal were the royal principles of salvific history uh, by the Trinity. You understand what I mean? So that's just it. But that's just one passage. Somebody could say, well, I mean, you know, paradise can't mean heaven, though. I mean, so what's the deal? Paramount, I mean, paradise, I mean, it could be heaven. You know, could be. So let's go to another passage. And let's that's, that's, check out the location. Okay, now remember, when Jesus died, he went someplace. We're trying to figure out, not really know, okay, by God's grace, where did he go? Did he go to heaven or did he go to hell? Now, I say he went to hell, not in torment, because remember, he said to Telesai upon the cross, you know, it is finished. So he went to hell, yeah, but to preach, and then he, he came out of there after the three days and three nights that he, were, he, they, he, that he was there. And he was not abandoned there. You understand what I mean? That's, all, that's when Psalm uh, 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 16 verse 10 comes into uh, the pool of the, of the debate. He was not left in Sheol. That's the thing. So if he was not abandoned in Sheol, then he, was, he was taken out of there. And then he went someplace after that. Well, he went, uh, he, he joined his body. The, the spirit or, or, or the soul, uh, and the soul entered into the body again that was on upon the planet's surface and the tomb, and he was risen from the dead to stand yet again alive. Okay, and and then he saw Mary. That's the first a uh, 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 person human being that he saw, and then Mary went and and told uh, uh, the other disciples, and that's just the deal. But let's check it out now. Let's go to Matthew's gospel. Okay, Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 12, 
and uh, let's check out, I think it's around, oh, well, let me just get to chapter first here, okay, chapter 12, okay, let's check out the location of Sheol, the location, where is Sheol? Is it in, uh, you know, one of the three heavens? Is, is that it? Is, I mean, is, 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 where is it? The sky? The F? Where is it? Well, actually, it tells us the location of where Jesus went. Okay? Very, very important. Well, it says over here, for just as Jesus is speaking, for just as Jonah was uh, three, and the Greek word is uh, threes, Three, I, I like tries better. <laughs> it sounds kind of like a, it's very hard to pronounce, you know, trace or cheese. So we'll, we'll look at the Greek word. Uh, so it says again, uh, again, for just as Jonah was three days, see, look at this, three, not 40, three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster of the whale. So. Will the Son, S O N, by the way, will the Son of Man, that's Jesus, will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in where? The heaven? No, the heart of the earth. 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 Let's look at the Greek. Well, let's read this again. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly or the heart of the sea monster, you understand what I'm saying? Sort of the same thing. So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the where? Heart of the earth. The heart of the earth, you understand what I'm saying? The heart of the earth. Let's check out the Greek. Let's go to this app right over here. And let's go to Matthew's Gospel. And uh, that's just it. Let's go two chapters after the I, Iota. And that'll be uh, Iota Beta, and that's chapter 12, okay? Now, I know that some of you don't know Greek, but just please stay with me, okay? Let me go to the end of the chapter. That's the Royal Method one. There's a lot of verses. And it will backtrack, you know, more easily, you know what I mean, and find it. Okay, so you see, that's 40, 46, and that's, so that's kind of easy. Oh, my love, Anna. I just had to have to placate my daughter, you know. She's she's only like two plus, okay. And sometimes, you know, I I think that the, the people in the tower are not even born, but that's just another topic. It says over here, uh, Hosper, uh, it's like just as Garf, and that's four. You translate that first, okay. Egeneta, and that's uh, was, but I mean, Egeneta, um, uh, it says over here, Ioannas, just Jonah in Greek, Ioannas, spelled out a capital Iota, that's an I. Omega looks like a W, that's an O, like in the word home. Nu looks like a V, but it's an N in Greek. Alpha and Sigma, and that looks like what they are. Okay, uh, Ha, Pra, Fetis, uh, that's the, the prophet, okay, and that's a attributive adjective, okay. Uh, in it says ente uh, colia, and that, that's like the word where we get colon, right? Ente colia, okay, in the belly is colia. Now, of the of the uh, sea monster is two, that's of the uh, ketus. Okay, uh, same monster. Uh, and it's over here, tres, or, uh, and that's three. Days is hemeras, and Greek word chi, three, and that's tres, C-T-R-E-I-S, or uh, tau, ro, epsilon, iota, sigma. And, and night is nuktas. Okay, so that's the, so that's the, um, uh, that's the I, I believe that's the genitive of of of, of time there. Uh, three days and three nights. Okay. Okay. Uh, hutos in this manner. Okay. Will be esti. Okay. The and uh, my baby is really messing me up now. Oh my nose. 
It's like a nursery, guys. I mean, you just can't take it. And the, okay, sun. And the sun. Or also, you can translate that also, okay, the Greek word chi, the sun, hawiyas, of man, two anthropos, uh, through, through anthro, two anthropo, okay, in the heart, and te cardia, okay, taste gays, uh, uh, three days, okay, tres uh, gemeras, okay, and uh, tres or tres nuptas, okay, so you have the genitive of of time here, okay, three days and three nights, and the genitive of place, okay, in the cardia, the taste, gays, and that's uh, the genitive of uh, uh, the genitive of a place, and then the other thing is the genitive of time. Okay, the genitive is a d descriptive case in, in Greek. But you see, that's very clear. It's very, very clear that he was in the heart. Now, what's the word for earth here? Gase is from the, on the Greek word, uh, 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 get, which means, okay, earth. Aretz, actually in Hebrew. Okay, who will be in the aretz, okay, in the aretz for three days. And three uh, nights, probably uh, shaloshe in the Hebrew uh, New Testament, because that's the, the Hebrew word for three. You see three uh, people appearing, probably the Trinity. Well, we don't know for sure, but an example of it anywhere or the Trinity appearing to Abraham in chapter 18 of the book of Genesis. You understand what I'm saying? One lot uh, went to heaven and two uh, um, uh, uh, stayed and judge Sodom and Gabbara. But you see over here, quite clear, that he was in the heart, cardia. That's where we get the word uh, cardiogram and, 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 and heart and stuff like that. And echocardia, uh, echocardiogram and, and all these uh, wonderful things, okay, from the Greek word cardia, which means heart, the center, the heart of the earth. Not just, you know, that he was just buried in a tomb. No, 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 no. But he went into the heart of the earth. Let's, let's look at the English again. Let's look at the English. Okay. All right. That's just it. Where is it now? Okay, so it's up there. For just as Jonah, okay, was uh, three days and, okay, three nights in the belly. See, he was in the belly. He wasn't on the belly. He wasn't on top of the whale, Okay. You understand what I'm saying? He wasn't surfboarding. You understand what I'm saying? He was in the belly of the uh, sea a monster. Now, remember, when you look at that prophecy of Jonah, okay, that whale was traveling, I mean, you know, past mountains under the sea. Okay? I mean, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was deep under the, 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 the I mean, underneath uh, the surface of the water. I mean, he was, he was traveling in there. He probably went to the Philippines. Who knows? I mean, he was so... I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just tongue in cheek. But it says over here, okay, he was the belly of the sea monster. He wasn't on top of the sea monster. He was in the belly of the sea monster. You know what I'm saying? So will the son, in this manner, so will the son of man be three days, see, the same time, three days and three nights in where? Where? In the heart of the earth. Now, so it says three days. Well, what, what does where does that time fit Jesus's profile? Well, I mean, he was uh, logos, you know, throughout all eternity. Okay, the Greek word aim, which means was, in John one one, found three times. Okay, in John one one a, b, and c, one time in each of those independent clauses. And the first one is teaching us the continuous, timeless, eternal subsistence of or logos or uh, logos. Okay, the what before he became flesh. So that doesn't fit there, the three days and three nights. It doesn't fit. Well, he became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, or tabernacled among us. Okay, it says over there. Okay, eskenese. I mean, he tabernacled among us. Does that, does that fit, you know, Bethlehem? Three days and three nights? No. Now, before he became um, 12 years old, do we have any record of three days and three nights? No. Okay. What he did at, at the age of 12 going to Jerusalem, does that fit something at three days and three nights? No. 
after he, he, there's no record between 12 years old and 30 years old. So forget about that. That's not three days and three nights. You understand what I'm saying? How about at the age of 30 when he was baptized? Does, does, is there anything recorded in the synoptic gospels? Because John doesn't mention the baptism of three days and three nights. No. So forget about that. Does anything fit three days and three nights, okay, him being in some place for three days and three nights? Well, you can't say, okay, that anything fits that, that recorded record, okay? The only thing the only thing that fit. how about three days and three nights on the cross? No, that doesn't fit, okay? Now we're getting to the nitty-gritty. How about, forget about the resurrection for now, but how about after? How about when Jesus became alive? Does does the, anything fit th three days and three nights? No, because it mentions that he was with the disciples for 40 days. Does anything fit three days and three nights when he went to, to heaven, skipping everything else? No, because he's, he's there forevermore. Death have no more dominion over him. And he's, he's interceding on our behalf, okay? Co-heirs with, with Christ Jesus, right? Uh, verse 17 of chapter 8 of Romans. Okay? Is he coming back for three days and three nights? No. He's coming back. Greek word parousia. He's going to reign for a thousand years. Does that fit three days and three nights? No. And after that, he will destroy enemy, and, he, and all the enemies of Christ will be uh, put under his footstool. So that's, does that match three days and three nights? No. That'll be forevermore. So the only thing that fits three days and three nights. Now, he, he, he said that this is in the future. It's in the future. But where? Well, we see that uh, the prophecy, okay, I mean, you see it in Matthew chapter 16, you see it all over the place, that the prophecy that he was going to die, and he, he, he was going to be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and then he was going to be raised from the dead after the three days and three nights. And that's the only thing that fits. That's the only thing that fits. Well, let's check this out. Uh, so let's go to another scripture, okay? Let's go to, okay, um, let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ah, around verse 10, but we'll check it out, okay? Ephesians, chapter 4, okay? Chapter 4 and around verse 10, okay? So around verse 8, let's, let's go up to verse 8, you understand what I mean? So let's get there, and let's see the location of Sheol. Okay, it was in the heart of the earth, but where, uh, but where's that? Where is it? It says over here, therefore, okay, it says, okay, when he ascended, meaning Christ, when he ascended, okay, on high, okay, that's the ascension, but let's keep on reading, he led captivity uh, a host, a captive, a host of, uh, captives, and he gave uh, gifts uh, to men. Now, <laughs> wait just for a second, though. This is not finished. The apostle keeps on writing here. He didn't do that right away. Verse 9. Now, it says, this expression, he ascended. What does, it says over here, it mean except that he also had descended into the heaven? No, into the lower parts of the earth. Okay? He who descended, okay, is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens. See, there you go. So that he might full uh, might fill all things, you see, uh, fill all things. But see, it says over there that he went to the lower parts of the earth. Now that's recorded actually in verse nine. Now this expression, he ascended. What does it mean, except that he also had descended. You see, descended though. Ascended is, uh, is ascended, and descended is descended. Ascend, uh, uh, ascended means going up, descended means going down into the lower parts or regions of the earth. You see? It fits, to a, it fits like a T, okay? It fits like a glove. 
what is recorded in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. The lower parts of the earth. And that means the heart of the earth. It, it deep in the earth. In the center of this globe dwells all the people that have died throughout, the, throughout all the ages of recorded history upon this planet. In the center of this earth. Okay? In this earth, the heart of the earth, the lower parts of the earth, are living all the people that died that did not go to heaven. They're living right in this planet, in the middle of the cardia, or the regions of the lower parts of the regions of the earth. And they're waiting there to be judged. And they're in their spirits of existence. Okay? That's just the deal. Now, but there, there were two divisions in this, in this shield, and this is this lower part of the earth. The two divisions. Dr. Barnhouse, a very, very um, wonderful Bible teacher, used to call this, okay, paradise, east, well, east hell and west hell. East hell and west hell. He said, like, uh, uh, you know, paradise and hell and torment and hell. Hell had a division, a division. That a great gulf was fixed, okay, in the middle of those two divisions. You understand what I'm saying? And none can go to the other side. Doesn't that sound familiar? Let's go there now. Luke chapter 16 is recorded and the scriptures cannot be broken. So before we get there, we already saw that, you know, uh, Messiah had to go to Sheol. And he wasn't abandoned in Sheol as a, pro as a prophecy. Recorded in the Old Testament in Psalm 16, verse 10. But then, where is Sheol located? Is it in heaven? Is it in outer space someplace? Is it on a cloud? Is it on a moon? Where is it? Right, right here, it tells you alongside uh, Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, actually where he was. Okay? Where he was. A paradise is the name of one of the places in Sheol. Okay, so you have Sheol, that's the main vein place. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you might go to a hotel, but it doesn't mean that you're in your room. You could be in a, you know, uh, dinner place in a hotel, or you could be in a pool, or you could be, uh, I mean, you know, you could be anywhere. Okay, <laughs> whatever the case may be. Sunroof or whatever, I don't know. I mean, you know, you know what I mean? That's just the deal. So there's just compartments in Sheol. Divisions. And Sheol. Okay, well, let's just see in Luke chapter 16. Okay, let's check this out. Uh, Luke, the Gospel Kata Lukan, okay, according to Luke. Lukan, uh, Lukas in, uh, in, in Greek, you understand what I'm saying? So let's see here. Okay. All right. And let's go to chapter 16. All right, and let's go to around verse 20. It's going to be probably be before that. So let's go. Let's, let's piece all this together. And that's the problem that the, the, the church has to do this, and it doesn't sometimes. Oh, he went to heaven, and that's it. No. He went to heaven after he preached in Sheol. And we're going to look at that, as a matter of fact, also. This is very important because this proves that Messiah, that Jesus was very much alive. Now, the witnesses say that his soul was destroyed after, after the cross. Well, if, you, if, if it was destroyed, why is he preaching? Why is he in, in a place? And why he wasn't abandoned there? And why is he preaching there? Okay? Well, he wasn't destroyed. Well, Luke chapter 16 and verse 20 it says something like this. And a poor man, it says over here, named Lazarus, okay, uh, was laid at his gate, at the rich man's gate. The rich is probably the Greek word plusios, okay, uh, covered uh, with sores. It reminds me of, of Job, right, or Job. Uh, 21. And a longing to be fed with the uh, crumbs, with the crumbs which uh, were falling, okay, from the rich man's table, okay, besides, uh, it says, even the dogs were uh, coming and licking uh, his sores, or his, his, his gorpes, his sores, you know, in Spanish, gorpes, you know, verse 22. Now the poor man died. 
and was carried away by the angels. Okay, to Abraham's a bosom. Now let's stop there for a second. Okay, well let me let's continue. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now let's stop at verse 23. So at the time of the Old Testament, okay, I mean, you know, because uh, the New Testament hasn't been written yet. So, I mean, this, this story happened before the cross, before the resurrection. So this is what happened. When you died as a believer, the angels will carry your soul to Abraham. That's what happened. Okay? That's what happened. Now to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. Infinitives. To be absent from the body is to be present. And those are those are infinitives. Verbal nouns. Well, we'll check that out at another time, okay? But he was carried to Abraham, not to heaven. Okay? Verse 23. In Hades. There you go. In Hades. Doesn't that sound familiar? In Hades? And we have to check out the Greek, verse 23. But if it is so, that is Hayden uh, there. Uh, it's the same Greek, of, the Greek word found in the Septuagint. Uh, Psalm 15 is actually Psalm 15 in the Greek Septuagint. Psalm 16 in the Hebrew and in the, in the, in the, in the English. Well, Jesus went to Hades. He went to Hades there. Now, this man went to Hades. Okay? Before the, uh, the, the resurrection. Okay, he went to Hades, and uh, Jesus went uh, to Hades as well. But let's keep on reading. It says, oh, yeah. And it says, in Hades, he lifted up uh, his eyes, okay, being in torment, meaning uh, um, uh, the rich man, though, being in torment, and saw, okay, Abraham far away, and uh, Lazarus in his bosom or chest okay now check this out verse 24 and he cried out meaning rich man i don't know how he cried out i mean he, he was in torment he was, was tormented maybe his mouth was only in torment okay uh maybe it was torment but in such a degree uh no pun intended that he could tolerate it to such a degree he was in ag 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 agony he was in torment but he can still speak. Now, I can imagine somebody in fire that is talking. I mean, when you're in fire, man, you can't talk. But, uh, you know. But it says over here that he was talking. Uh, verse 24. And he cried out, meaning this rich man, and said, and it said, Father Abraham. Now, he probably was a Jew. That's why he said Father Abraham. He probably was a Jewish man in hell. In hell, I am Tatcha. Have mercy, okay, on me. Well, he should have. He should have said, "Have mercy on, upon me, O Lord," when he was alive upon the earth. Why is he crying out to Abraham? Abraham can do nothing about it. I, I, your, your time. The, now is the accept, this, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. You don't cry out to somebody when you're in hell. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? It's too late. Uh, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me. Have mercy on me, it says over here. And, he's, uh, and he uh, s uh, says over here, send. Oh, no, it says over here. Um, uh, let me see over here. And said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Oh, and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his uh, finger, okay, in water. And that's the genesis of a place, okay? And cool off my uh, tongue. So he's not saying cool off his body. He's saying cool off my tongue. So maybe his tongue was on fire. Uh, cool off my tongue for I am in agony in this flame. Now check this out. But Abraham, probably uh, Alpha, Landa, Landa, Alpha there, but we could check it out in the Greek in another uh, uh, time. But Abraham said, Apen, probably in the Greek over there, child, see, he is technon in Greek. 
Now, he probably was a child of Abraham according to the flesh. Child, remember. Remember that during your life, you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus, bad things. Okay? But now, he is being comforted here. Okay? And you are in agony or in torment. Now, verse 26, check this out. And besides, said Abraham, all this between us and you, there is a great, okay, chasm fixed so that those who wish to come to come over from here to you will not be able and that none okay may cross over from uh, there uh, to us what is what is abraham saying well abraham saying listen in this place that we're at there's a chasm there's a big giant you know empty space that you we cannot cross to you and you can't cross to us so that's the division that I'm talking about in Sheol. West hell and east hell. Okay, east hell, uh, you can say east hell was paradise. Paradiso, where Jesus went. And, and Lazarus. But the Shira went to west hell. And they couldn't come to Abraham. And Abraham couldn't go uh, to him. Okay, so that was the lo location of Sheol. Okay, verse 26 says there was a great gulf fixed. Okay, and, that, and this is going on. In the heart of the earth. In the heart of the earth. In the heart of the earth. You understand what I'm saying? In the heart. In the heart. Now, let's go, okay, and see what Jesus did there. Now, I said that he didn't go to heaven right away. So what did Jesus do those three days and three nights that his body was on the planet surface on the earth and his spirit uh, uh, was in Sheol? What did he do? What did he do in Sheol? We, we know that he wasn't abandoned in Sheol. We know that his spirit wasn't left by the Father. So, what was he doing there? Was he alive? Yes. Okay, fine, good. But what did he do? Well, the royal passage of Scripture is found and recorded in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. So, let's get there. Okay, there's many Scriptures. Many Scriptures. So, let's just get to some in this time that we have allowed it to us. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, First Peter, First Peter chapter three, and this will be my lesson for today. Okay, guys, First Peter chapter three, and, and you know there's other scriptures. These are not the only ones. All right, let's let's go and see what Peter, what Jesus did in she in Sheol. Now remember, he went to she Hades is a Greek word there, and Paradiso is another Greek word there. But then he went to prison to preach. Well, you can only go to prison to preach, okay, if your your soul is alive, okay. So this idea that the Jehovah's Witnesses they 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 teach, okay, that Jesus' soul was destroyed. I don't see any evidence here. I don't see it. First Peter chapter three, okay. Uh, verse nineteen says something like this. Uh, okay, now let me see. Uh, let me go to uh, verse eighteen first and get a sort of a broader context. You know what I mean? Now it says, for Christ also died, you see, for uh, Christ also died for sins once, okay, probably hapox in Greek over there, for all, the just for the unjust, the just for the unjust, so that he might, that's probably a, a, a subjunctive there in Greek, we can check that out in the future, bring us to God, that he might bring us to God, having been put to death, okay, all right, in the flesh, the psyche, right in the flesh, but made, okay, alive in the spirit. Now, that has to be translated, have been, have, may be made alive by the Holy Spirit, okay, by the Holy Spirit. Okay, Panumati is also in Psalm 32 in the Greek Septuagint, and that's Psalm 33, verse 6 in other uh, 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 Bibles, like in the Hebrew Bible and in the English Bible, by the word of the Lord, uh, by, or by the word of the Lord, and also by the Spirit, uh, by the breath of His mouth, 
You see, he, he made things as well. You see, so you can say bye. Panumati is the same Greek word here. But that's another thing. That's my baby Sean. I cried for his mother. In which also it says he, he went. What do you mean he? That's a capital H. Christ. In which also he went and made proclamation. To who? To the spirits now in prison. To the spirits now in prison. So Jesus was proclaiming something to the spirits now in prison. Now he went to prison to preach. Now where does that fit? Well, he went to prison after, you know, during the three days and three nights, guys. He didn't go to prison when he was here upon the planet of service for 40 days, uh, you know, teaching the disciples. You know what I mean? It's talking about his death over here. In which also, I'm going to talk right over my shin. In which also he went and made proclamation to the spirits now in prison. The spirits. It doesn't say fleshly people. It's to the spirits. Now, let's check it out. Now, what kind of people were these guys? I mean, it's very hard. It's like a nursery here. It's like a school. Now, what are what are there? What is the identification of this this group of people? Okay, of these people in the prison. Now, if it says that he went to preach to the Sanhedrin, okay, well, that's a, you know that means at the time of Jesus, you know. Okay, just give me a couple of minutes, uh, uh and I, you know, so you can take him a bath. This is gonna be a couple, almost finished. Now, did, did, did he go to the Sanhedrin? No, because of this upcoming verse. Now, check this out. There's another one right here who once were, check this out, disobedient when the uh, patience of God, okay, kept waiting. In the days of Noah, I uh, see. In the days of Noah, during the construction of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely, okay, through water. So the identification of those souls, of the spirits that were present. Okay, let's look at it again. Verse 20. Let's take out the highlight, though. Uh, let me see over here. Okay, who once were disobedient. Okay, when the patience of God had kept waiting in the days of Noah. So those people were the people that were alive at the days of Noah. Not in the time of Jesus upon earth. You see? There you go. Now, let's look at that, okay? Let's look at the um, the who, okay? Now, that who might be in the plural, referring back to the antecedent, okay? Um, let's check that out, okay? Um, that's numbers, okay? I was looking at, you know, um, you know, the serpent being hung on a pole there, you know what I mean? Because of the disobedience of the, of, the, of the children of Israel. But anyway, let's go to uh, verse uh, chapter 3 and verse 20. Hi, my love. My, my love, Anna, is doing very, very, very good. Very well. Anna Devane, my daughter. Well, it says over here, okay, having uh, disobeyed. At one time, you see, at one time, uh, let me see over here for a second, guys. I'm sorry about that. Okay, when, okay, Hati, when was, okay, waiting, okay, the God, okay, long suffering, it says over here, look at that, God's long suffering God, I mean, goodness gracious. 
Okay, the days, okay, uh, heme, hemerai, the days of Noah, you see? Now, let's go, let's go to a ver the verse before that. It says over here, okay, in, okay, in which, okay, also, Greek word kai, okay, toys, to the, okay, in, to the in prison, okay. Uh, it says over here, Fulake. Fulake. Prison is Fulake. Okay, spirits, okay. Panuma. Uh, let me see. Panuma Sin. Okay, Panuma Sin. The spirits in prison. Having a gone, okay, having gone, okay, paru face, having gone, he preached, okay, eke ruxen, eke ruxen, preached, okay, now let's check this out, this probably is in the in in Aris tense, okay, you see that the augment epsilon right in, in front of the kappa there? It's like an ED in our English word, like kicked. But the, the Greeks like to put that in front of the, of, the, of, the, of the Greek word at times, right? Epsilon. Okay. So that's, the, that's pointing out the aorist test. Ekeruxen. Ekeruxen. And that's just the deal. And then the sigma. And then the sig. And then the, let me see. Ekeruxen. And then, um, and the sigma there in the kisi is probably pointing out the aris uh, test uh, construction. Okay, the sigma can do that in the aris. The kappa can do also, but that's another kind of a verb, a me verb. You understand what I'm saying? Ekeruksen. Okay, he preached. Now, where do we get the word he? Well, you get it from the context. You don't get it from the verb itself. Ekeru said he preached. That's what Jesus was doing. As Angelo Quinone is given glory. To God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that, that uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Okay, so we learn that in Matthew chapter 12, okay, verse 40, we learn the location of Sheol. Okay, we saw the location of Sheol. It was in the heart of the earth, uh, earth uh, Greek word cardia. I'm going to get to my daughter now, guys. And then we saw in the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, that it was the lower regions or parts of the earth collaborating with Matthew uh, 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 wrote. You understand what I mean? And we, we, we saw that actually um, in Luke chapter... My love, my love, a hey, love. Calm down, okay? Calm down, my love, okay? Hey, daddy's here. We saw in uh, Luke chapter uh, 23, verse 43, that Jesus said to the repentant sinner upon the cross, Today ye shall be with me in paradise. So we have one name uh, uh, that's different than, than from the one in Psalm 16, verse 10. You have a shield there. That's the overall place, shield, right? And then you have a compartment in Sheol, which is paradise, okay? All right? And then you have two divisions there, according to verse 26 of chapter uh, uh, 16 of Luke, okay? There's a great gulf fix in the middle of those two, like east well and hell, uh, west hell, if you will. And a great gulf fix that nobody can cross over. You understand what I'm saying? And then we saw what Jesus was doing in, in Sheol. Not only was he not abandoned in Sheol, and that he was alive in Sheol, and then he 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 took that repentant uh, a sinner to Sheol, and he was there that very day. But what was he doing? He was preaching to the spirits that were disobedient at the time of Noah's flood, at the time of the ark. Okay, that's the identification of those people. Because you could say to me, "Oh well, he went to preach to to to, to some people in Jerusalem." Okay, just any you know the, the average Joe. No, no, he went to preach to the sinners. That were at the time of Noah's flood. Okay? So those are all the scriptures. Okay? That I can at least give you now. That will indicate that Jesus was very much alive. Okay? After the crucifixion. 
uh, during the three days and three nights that uh, his body was in the tomb, he was busy preaching, okay, some kind of a message to these uh, souls in Fulake, in the prison in paradise in Shio. Take care, guys. There's a nursery going on here, so I have to go. Is Angelo Kenyon to take care? Bye bye now. <laughs> take care, guys. Bye bye now. <laughs> I love it. Bye, guys. <laughs>